Mag. Composite Exhibit A. United States District Court Southern District of New York X Virginia L. GIUFFRE. Against Dash. Plaintiff. Case No. 15 CV 07433 RWS. Gislaine Maxwell. Defendants. X. Confidential. Videotaped deposition of Gislaine Maxwell, taken pursuant to subpoena, was held at the law offices of Boyce Schiller and Flexner, 575 Lexington Avenue, New York, New York, commencing April 22, 2016, 9.04 a.m. on the above date, before Leslie Fagan, a court reporter and notary public in the state of New York. Magna Legal Services, 1200 Avenue of the Americas, New York, New York, 10026. Appearances. Boyce Schiller and Flexner, LLP Attorneys for Plaintiff. 401 East Los Olas Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33301. By Sigrid McCauley, Esquire. Meredith Schultz, Esquire Emma Rosen, Paralegal. Farmer Jaffe Weising Edwards Fistos and Lehrman, PL. Attorneys for Plaintiff 425 North Andrews Avenue, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33301. By Brad Edwards, Esquire. Paul G. Castle, Esquire Attorneys for Plaintiff. 383, South University Street, Salt Lake City, Utah, 84112. Haddon Morgan Foreman Attorneys for Defendant. 150, East 10th Avenue, Denver, Colorado, 80203. By Jeffrey S. Pagliuca, Esquire Laura A. Menninger, Esquire. Also present. James Christ, videographer. For questions about people under the age of 18 at Epstein's home. G. Maxwell, confidential Q. You can answer. A. I have not any idea exactly of the youngest adult employee that I hired for. Q. When you say adult employee, did you ever hire someone that was under the age? A. Never. Q. Did you ever bring someone who was under invite someone under the age of 18 to Jeffrey's home, any of his homes? Emmer Pagliuca, object to the Forum Foundation. A. Can you repeat the question? Q. Did you ever invite anybody who was under the age of 18 to Jeffrey's homes? I. Emmer Pagliuca, same objections. I have a number of friends that have children and friends of mine that have kids and in the invitation of my friends and their kids, I'm sure I may have invited some of my friends' kids to come. Q. Anybody that is not a friend of. Questions about meeting the plaintiff and. Massages with plaintiff. G. Maxwell, confidential. A. Ms. Roberts held herself out. Q. I'm not asking how she held herself out. I'm asking how she arrived at the home. Did you meet her and invite her to come to the home or how did she arrive there? Mr. Paliuka, object to the form and foundation. A. Ms. Roberts held her to be a masseuse and her mother drove her to the house. Q. When did you first meet Virginia Roberts? A. I don't have a recollection of the first meeting. Q. Do you recall meeting her at Mar-a-Lago? A. Like I said, I don't have a recollection of meeting Ms. Roberts. So you recall Ms. Roberts being brought to the home by her mother. Is that your testimony? A. That is my testimony. And that is the first time you met her. A. Like I said, I don't recall meeting her the first time. I do remember her mother bringing her to the house. Are you a member at Mar-a-Lago? A. No. Have you visited Mar-a-Lago? A. Yes. Did you visit Mar-a-Lago in the 10 year 2000? A. I'm pretty sure I did. When Ms. Roberts arrived at the home with her mother, what happened? I spoke to her mother outside of the house and she, what I don't recall is exactly what happened because I was talking to her mother the entire she was in the house. Did you introduce Ms. Roberts to Jeffrey Epstein? I don't recall how she actually met Mr. Epstein. As I said, I spoke to her, mother the entire time outside the house. Did you walk Ms. Roberts up to the upstairs location at the Palm Beach house to absolutely everything that took place in that first meeting? She has lied repeatedly, often and is just an awful fantasist. So, very difficult for anything to take place that she repeated because I was with her mother the entire time. So did you have, did you give a massage with Virginia Roberts and Mr. Epstein during the first time Virginia Roberts was at the West Palm Beach house? Mr. Paliuka, object to the form and foundation. Yes or no? A. No. Have you ever given a massage with Virginia Roberts in the room and Jeffrey Epstein? Mr. Paliuka, object to the form and foundation. A. No. 
Have you ever given Jeffrey Epstein a massage? Mr. Paliuka, object to the form, foundation, and I'm going to instruct. Questions about massages with minors. G. Maxwell, confidential questions. Mr. Paliuka, I'm instructing her not to answer. Ms. McCauley, then we will be back here again. Q. Have you ever given a massage to Mr. Epstein with a female that was under the age of 18? A. Can you repeat the question? Q. Yes. Have you ever given a massage to Mr. Epstein with a female that was under the age of 18? A. No. Q. Have you ever observed Mr. Epstein having a massage given by an individual, a female, who was under the age of 18? A. No. Q. Have you ever observed females under the age of 18 in the presence of Jeffrey Epstein at his home? Mr. Paliuka, object to the form and foundation. A. Again, I have friends that have children, questions about hiring massage therapists. Maxwell, confidential just another one of Virginia's many. Fictitious lies and stories to make this a salacious event to get interest in press. It's absolute rubbish. Q. Were you in charge of hiring individuals to provide massages for Jeffrey Epstein? A. My job included hiring many people. There were six homes. As I sit here, I hired assistants, I hired architects, I hired decorators, I hired cooks, I hired cleaners, I hired gardeners, I hired pool people, I hired pilots, I hired all sorts of people. In the course and a very small part of my job was from from time to time to find adult professional massage therapists for Jeffrey. Q. When you say adult professional massage therapists, where did you find these? Massage therapists. A. From time to time I would visit professional spas. I would receive a massage and if the massage was good I would ask that man or woman if they did home visits. Questions about Jane Doe 2 and Nadia Marcinkova. G. Maxwell. Confidential here today I do not. Ms. Maxwell. When did you first? Meet Mr. Paliuka. Object to the form and foundation. A. I have no idea when I met her. Q. Do you know how old she was when you met her? A. I have no idea how old she was when I met her. Q. Is it possible she was 13 years old when you first met her? Mr. Paliuka, object to the form and foundation. May have been in the house when Jeffrey was. In the house. I have no idea how old she was. Q. I understand she was with I'm asking if was 13 years old when you first met her. A. I have no idea. Maxwell, confidential Q. Was she under 18 when you first met her? A. I have no idea how old she was when I first met her. Did she look like a child when you first met her? A. I don't remember what she looked like at the time she was in the house. Q. How many years have you known her? A. I can only recall the last time I saw her. Q. When was the first time you met her? A. Again, I just told you, I don't recall the first time I met her. Q. Did travel with you on Jeffrey's planes? A. I wouldn't remember if was on the plane or not. Q. Did you ever have sex with A? No. Q. Did you ever observe Jeffrey having sex with? G. Maxwell, confidential A. No. Q. Were you aware that Jeffrey was having sexual contact with when she was 13 years old? Mr. Paliuka, object to the form and foundation. A. I would be very shocked and surprised if that were true. Q. Were you in the house when was in the house in a private area with Jeffrey Epstein? Mr. Paliuka, object to the form and foundation. A. Can you repeat the question? Q. Were you ever in the Palm Beach house when Jeffrey Epstein was in the house with? Mr. Paliuka, object to the form and foundation. A. I've already testified that I have met her and that she was there. I don't understand what your question is asking. Q. So you have never seen G. Maxwell? Confidential Mr. Paliuka, object to the form and foundation. Q. Is that your testimony? A. I already said I don't recall all the times I've seen her and I have no memory of that. Q. Have you ever seen in the house with Jeffrey Epstein Mr. Paliuka, object to the form 13 and foundation. A. I just told you I don't recall seeing Q. Were you ever involved in an orgy with A? No, absolutely not. Q. Can you tell me, do you know an individual by the name of Nadia Marcinkova? A. I do. Q. How did you meet Nadia Marcinkova? A. At some point she was a friend of Jeffrey's and I recall meeting her at some point. Maxwell, confidential Q. Did Jeffrey arrange for a visa for Nadia Marcinkova? A. I don't know what Jeffrey did. I cannot testify what Jeffrey did. Q. Was Nadia involved in sex with Jeffrey and other girls? Mr. Paliuka, object to the Form 9 and Foundation. Q. Girls under the age of 18. Mr. Paliuka, same objection. A. I have no idea. Q. Was Nadia involved with sex with Jeffrey and girls over the age of 18? Mr. Paliuka, same objection. A. I have no idea. Q. Did Nadia recruit other girls for sex with Jeffrey? Mr. Paliuka, object to the form and foundation. A. I have no idea. Q. Do you still talk to Nadia? A. No. Q. Is she a pilot? A. I have no idea. Questions about Mr. Epstein and sex. Maxwell, confidential acts.
I'm asking whether any of the massage therapists perform sexual acts for Mr. Epstein, as I have just described. A. I have never seen anybody have a sexual intercourse with with Jeffrey, ever. Q. I'm not asking about sexual intercourse. I'm asking about any sexual act, touching of the breast, did you ever see, can you read back the question? Record read, A. I'm not addressing any questions about consensual adult sex. If you want to talk about what the subject matter, which is defamation and lying, Virginia Roberts, that you and Virginia Roberts are participating in perpetrating her lies, I'm happy to address those. I never saw any inappropriate underage activities with Jeffrey ever. Q. I'm not asking about underage. I'm asking about whether any of the masseuses that were at the home performed sexual acts for Jeffrey Epstein. A. I have just answered the question. Q. No, you haven't questions about Sarah Kellen, Glenn Dubin, Plaintiff, Joanna Sjaberg, Annie Farmer and Sex G. Maxwell, Confidential A. I have. Q. No, you haven't. A. Yes, I have. Q. You are refusing to answer the question. A. Let's move on. Q. I'm in charge of the deposition. I say when we move on and when we don't. You are here to respond to my questions. If you are refusing to answer the court will bring you back for another deposition to answer these questions. Do you understand that? Mr. Paliuka, you don't need to. Threaten the witness. Ms. McCauley, I'm not threatening her. I'm making sure the record is clear. Mr. Paliuka, certainly can you apply to have someone come back and the court may or may not have her come back again. Again, she is not answering questions that relate to adult consent G. Maxwell, confidential sex acts. Period. And that's the instruction and we can take it up with the court. Q. Ms. Maxwell, are you aware of any sexual acts with masseuses and Jeffrey Epstein that were non-consensual? A. No. Q. How do you know that? A. All the time that I have been in the house I have never seen, heard, nor witnessed, nor have reported to me that any activities took place, that people were in distress, either reported to me by the staff or anyone else. I base my answer based on that. Q. Are you familiar with a person by the name of Annie Farmer? A. I am. Q. Has Annie Farmer given a statement to police about you performing sexual acts on her? A. I have not heard that. Q. Has Annie Farmer given a statement to police about Jeffrey Epstein performing G. Maxwell, confidential asked and answered already? Q. You can answer the question. A. I have no idea what Sarah Kellen did. Q. You never observed Sarah Kellen with girls under the age of 18 at Jeffrey's home. Mr. Paliuka, object to the form and foundation. A. The answer is no, I have no idea. Q. Do you know Glenn Dubin? A. I do. Q. What is your relationship with Glenn Dubin? Mr. Paliuka, object to the form. A. What do you mean what is my relationship? Confidential massage. Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. No. Q. Did you ever instruct Virginia Roberts to have sex with Glenn? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. I have never instructed Virginia to have sex with anybody ever. Q. How old was Eva Anderson when she met Jeffrey? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. I have no idea. Q. What's she under the age of 18? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. I just testified I have idea how old she was. Q. You testified she was your friend. You don't know how old she was when she met. Jeffrey. A. That happened sometime in the 70s. Maxwell, confidential how would I know, or 80s. I have no idea. Can. You testify to what your friends did 30 years ago. Q. You don't ask the questions here, Ms. Maxwell. What? About Joanna Sjaberg, when did you first meet Joanna? A. I. Don't recall the exact date. Q. Did you hire Joanna? A. I don't hire people. She came to work at the house to answer phones. Q. Where did you meet her? A. I just testified. I don't recall exactly when I met her. Q. Was one of your job responsibilities to interview people that would be then hired by Jeffrey? A. That was one of my responsibilities. Q. Do you recall interviewing Joanna? A. I don't recall the exact interview, no. Q. Do you know what tasks Joanna was hired to performance? G. Maxwell, confidential A. She was tasked to answer telephones. Q. Did you ever ask her to rub Jeffrey's feet? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. I believe that I have read that, but I don't have any memory of it. Q. Did you ever tell Joanna that she would get extra money if she provided Jeffrey massages? A. I was always happy to give career advice to people and I think that becoming somebody in the healthcare profession, either exercise instructor or nutritionist or professional massage therapist is an excellent job opportunity. Hourly wages are around 7, 8, 9 dollars and as a professional healthcare provider you can earn somewhere between as we have established 100 to 200 dollars. And to be able to travel and have a job that pays that is a wonderful job opportunity. So, in the context of advising people for opportunities for work, it is possible that I 
G. Maxwell, confidential would have said that she should explore that as an option. Q. Did you tell her she would get extra money if she massaged Jeffrey? A. I'm just saying, I cannot recall the exact conversation. I give career advice and I have done that. Q. Did you ever have Joanna massage? You. A. I did. Q. How many times? A. I don't recall how many times. Q. Was there sex involved? A. No. Q. Did you ever instruct Joanna to massage Glenn Dubin? A. I don't believe. I have no recollection of it. Q. Did you ever have sexual contact with Joanna? Mr. Paliuka, object to the form and foundation. You need to give me an opportunity to get in between the questions. G. Maxwell, confidential anything that involves consensual sex on your part, I'm instructing you not to answer. Q. Did you ever have sexual contact with Joanna? A. Again, she is an adult. Q. I'm asking you, did you ever have sexual contact with Joanna? A. I've just been instructed not to answer. Q. On what basis? A. You have to ask my lawyer. Q. Did you ever have sexual contact with Joanna that was not consensual on Joanna's part? Mr. Paliuka, you can answer non-consensual. A. I've never had non-consensual sex. With anybody. Q. Not any farmer. Mr. Paliuka. Objection. A. I just testified I never had non-consensual sex with anybody ever, at any time, at any place, at any time, with anybody. G. Maxwell. Confidential Q. So if Joanna were to testify that she did not consent to a sexual act that you participated in. A. I just told you I have never ever under any circumstances with anybody, at any time, in any place, in any form had non-consensual relations with anybody. Q. Did you introduce Joanna to Prince Andrew? Mr. Paliuka. Objection to the form and foundation. A. I've, again, read that Joanna claimed that she met or that she said she met Prince Andrew. I don't know if I was the one who made the introduction or not. Q. Do you know a female by the name of Emmy Taylor? A. I do. Q. How do you know her? A. Emmy was my assistant. Q. So she worked for you? A. Yes. Q. Did you hire her? A. Again, Jeffrey hired people questions about Emmy Virginia and Ms. Maxwell regarding sex. G. Maxwell, confidential consensual issue involved, I instruct you not to answer. A. Moving on. Q. So you are refusing to answer the question. A. I've been instructed by my lawyer. Q. Did you ever have sex with Jeffrey, Emmy, Virginia and yourself when Virginia was underage? A. Absolutely not. Mr. Paliuka, we've been going for about an hour. I would like to take a five-minute break, please. Ms. McCauley, I'm almost done. Mr. Paliuka, you are not going to allow a break. Ms. McCauley, as soon as I get through my line of questioning, which is perfectly appropriate. Q. Did Emmy Taylor travel with you and Jeffrey to Europe? A. I'm sure she did. Q. What is she doing today? A. I have no idea. Questions about outfits and sex toys G. Maxwell, confidential about. Q. So you didn't provide her with that. A. As I just testified, I have no idea what you are talking about. Q. I was trying to interpret whether you didn't understand what a schoolgirl outfit was or you are saying that didn't happen. A. I clearly know what a schoolgirl outfit is. I have no recollection of providing anybody with a schoolgirl outfit. Q. Did you have a set of outfits used by the massage therapist that would include things like a schoolgirl outfit or a black patent leather outfit or anything of that nature? Mr. Paliuka, object to the form and foundation. That would be just another one of Virginia's lies. Q. You didn't have anything like that? A. I did not. Q. Did you have a basket of sex toys Maxwell, confidential, that you kept in the Palm Beach house? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. First of all what do you mean? Q. A laundry basket that contains sex toys in it. Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. Can you ask the question again? Q. Did you have a laundry basket that contains sex toys in it, in the Palm Beach house? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. Q. Did you have a laundry basket of sex toys in the Palm Beach house? Mr. Paliuka, same objection. Q. You can answer. A. I don't recollect anything about a laundry basket of sex toys. Q. Do you recollect having sex toys at the Palm Beach house? A. You have to define what are you talking about. Questions about plaintiff and Epstein and sex. G. Maxwell, confidential. Do you recall having a basket full of sex toys? A. I already told you I did not. Q. We were talking a moment ago about Ms. Roberts and her position as a masseuse. Do you know what she was paid for working as a masseuse for Jeffrey Epstein? A. I do not. Q. Did you ever pay her? A. I don't ever recall paying her. Q. Do you know what happened during the massage appointments with Jeffrey Epstein and Virginia Roberts? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. No. Q. Were you ever present to view a massage between Jeffrey Epstein and Virginia Roberts? A. 
I don't recollect ever seeing Virginia and Jeffrey in a massage situation. Q. Do you ever recollect seeing them in a sexual situation? A. I never saw them in a sexual situation. G. Maxwell, confidential did you ever participate in sex with Virginia Roberts and Jeffrey Epstein? A. I never ever at any single time at any point ever at all participated in anything with Virginia and Jeffrey. And for the record, she is an absolute total liar and you all know she lied on multiple things and, that is just one other disgusting thing she added. Q. Did you help her obtain an apartment in Palm Beach to live in? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. Q. Was that part of your responsibilities for Jeffrey? A. First of all, I didn't know she had an apartment in Palm Beach. I only learned that from the many times you guys have gone to the press to sell stories, so no. Q. Did you help her get a cell phone? Was that one of your responsibilities for Jeffrey? To get her as a cell phone as part of her masseuse obligations. Questions about training plaintiff to recruit girls for massages G. Maxwell, confidential form and foundation. A. Like I told you, I don't recall her being at the house at all. Q. How many homes does Jeffrey have? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. When I was working for him, I think, he had six maybe. Q. Would Virginia stay with him in those homes? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. I can only testify for when I was present with him and I cannot say what she did when I wasn't present with him. Q. When you were present, would Virginia stay in the homes with him? A. I don't recall her staying in the houses. Q. Did you train Virginia on how to recruit other girls for massages? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. No. G. Maxwell, confidential. Q. Did you train Virginia on how to recruit other girls to perform sexual massages? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. No. And it's absurd and her entire story is one giant tissue of lies and furthermore, she herself has, if she says, that, you have to ask her about what she did. Q. Does Jeffrey like to have his nipples pinched during sexual encounters? Mr. Mr. Paliuka, objection to form and foundation. A. I'm not referring to any advice on me counsel. I'm not talking about any adult sexual thing questions about Ms. Maxwell's relation. G. Maxwell, Confidential A. First of all I resent and despise the world recruit. Would you like to define what you mean by recruit and by girls, you mean underage people. I never had to do anything with underage people. So why don't you re-ask the question in a way that I am able to answer it. Q. I'm asking if you ever said that to anybody. So if you don't understand the word recruit and you never use that word then the answer to that question would be no. A. I have no memory as I sit here today having used that word. Q. Did you ever meet an underage girl in London to introduce her to Jeffrey to provide him with a massage? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. Run that past me one more time. Q. Did you ever meet an underage girl in London to introduce her to Jeffrey to perform a massage? Mr. Paliuka, same objection. A. Are you asking me if I met anybody G. Maxwell, confidential that was underage in London specifically to provide a massage to Jeffrey? Is that your question? Q. Yes. A. No. Q. Do you know who Alexander Dixon is? A. I don't recall her right now. Q. Do you know if, strike that, during the time that you were working for Jeffrey, did you ever observe any foreign females, so in other words, not from the United States, that were brought to Jeffrey's home to perform massages? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. Females, what age are we talking? Q. Any age. A. Can you repeat the question? Q. During the time you were working for Jeffrey, did you ever observe any foreign females of any age that were at Jeffrey's home to perform a massage? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation G. Maxwell, confidential A. Are you asking me if any foreigner, A. Are you asking me if any foreigner, not an American person, gave Jeffrey a message? Q. Yes. A. Well, as I sit here today, I can't think of anyone who is foreign. Certainly, I just can't think of anybody right this second. Q. How about any foreign girls who are under the age of 18? A. I already testified to not knowing anything about underage girls. Q. Were there foreign girls who were brought to Jeffrey's home by Jean Luc Brunel for the purposes of providing massages? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. I am not aware of Jean Luc bringing girls. I have not no idea what you are talking about. Q. You have never been around foreign girls who are under the age of 18 at Jeffrey's homes. Mr. Paliuka, objection to the Maxwell, confidential form and foundation. A. I already testified about not knowing about underage girls. Q. Did you provide any assistance with obtaining visas for foreign girls that were under the age of 18? A. I've never participated in helping people of any age to get visas. Q. Did Jeffrey, was it Jeffrey's 
preference to start a massage with sex. Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. I think you should ask that question of Jeffrey. Q. Do you know? I think you do. Mr. Paliuka, no question pending. She will ask you another question now. Questions about underage girls, sex with John Luke Brunel, and outfits. Maxwell, confidential Q were you present on the island when Prince Andrew visited? A. Yes. Q. How many times? A. I can only remember once. Q. Were there any girls under the age of 18 on the island during that one visit that you remember that were not family or friends of or daughters of your friends? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. There were no girls on the island 14 at all. No girls, no women, other than the staff who work at the house. Girls meaning, I assume you are asking underage, but there was nobody female outside of the cooks and the cleaners. Q. Did you, as part of your duties in working for Jeffrey, ever arrange for Virginia to have sex with John Luke Brunel? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. Just for the record, I have never at any time, at any place, in any moment ever Maxwell, confidential asked Virginia Roberts or whatever she is called now to have sex with anybody. Q. Did you ever provide Virginia Roberts with an outfit, an outfit of a sexual nature to wear for Leigh Wexner? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. I think we addressed the outfit issue. Q. I am asking you if you ever provided her with an outfit of a sexual nature to wear for Leigh Wexner. A. Categorically no. You did get that, I said categorically no Q. Don't worry I'm paying attention. A. You seemed very distracted in that moment. Maxwell Exhibit 6, Flight Logs, Marked for Identification. A. Do you mind if I take a break for the bathroom? Q. It's 11.08 and we're going to go off the record now. The videographer. It's now 11.09 questions about pictures of naked girls Maxwell. Confidential people could use. Just like you would use if you needed to go online to get something. That people could use. Q. Was that on a desk that you would use in your work capacity when you were at the house? A. It was a desk. It was a room I was. I didn't really use that computer. Q. Were there images of naked girls whether they be under the age of 18 or over the age of 18 on that computer? A. I have no recollection of any naked people on that computer when I was there in 2003, we are talking. Q. What about from say 99 to 2003? A. No, I can't recollect any naked pictures. Q. Why were the computers removed from the house before the search warrant was executed? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. A. I have no knowledge of anything like that questions about topless females G. Maxwell, confidential form and foundation. A. I mean I've been to his, in the mid-90s, I would have communicated with people who worked for him. Q. Have you communicated with Leslie Wexner about this case? A. No. Q. Have you ever seen a topless female at any one of Jeffrey Epstein's properties? Mr. Paliuka, objection to the form and foundation. You've asked this question, by the way, earlier on today. A. Again, I testified that there are people who from time to time in the privacy of a swimming pool have maybe taken a bikini, top off or something but it's not common and certainly when I was at the house I don't really recollect seeing that kind of activity. Q. Have you ever smoked cigarettes? A. Yes. Q. Have you ever smoked cigarettes? With Virginia Roberts. A. I don't recall smoking cigarettes. United States District Court Southern District of New York. Virginia L. Jufri. Plaintiff, Case No. 15 CV 07433 RWS. V. Gislaine Maxwell. Defendant. Plaintiff's unredacted reply in support of motion to compel. Defendant to answer deposition questions. Of allowing Ms. Jufri to take a full and complete deposition, defendant flatly refused to. Plaintiff Virginia Jufri, by and through her undersigned counsel, hereby files this. Reply in support of her motion to compel defendant to answer deposition questions. Instead, answer questions critical to the key issues in this case. Contrary to defendant's assertions, Ms. Jufri is not engaged in a fishing expedition but rather seeks to ask highly focused questions specifically relevant to this case. In particular, Ms. Jufri seeks to ask the defendant questions regarding her participation in her knowledge of sexual activities connected with Jeffrey Epstein's sexual abuse of females. Such questions are entirely appropriate in the discovery phase of this case, particularly where any answers will be maintained as confidential under the protective order entered in this case. 
As the court is aware from previous pleadings, at the heart of this case lies the issue of defendant's knowledge that Ms. Jufri was sexually abused by Jeffrey Epstein. Indeed, as the defendant boldly acknowledges in her response, at page 2, she intends to argue at trial that, among other things, she never arranged for or asked Ms. Jufri to have sex with anyone. At trial, Ms. Jufri intends to strongly disprove defendant's false assertions and to demonstrate that defendant recruited Ms. Jufri to be involved in massages of a sexual nature with Epstein. To develop evidence to support her position, Ms. Jufri recently deposed defendant about the central subjects in her case. Defendant flatly refused to answer a number of questions, and for the majority of the others, gave varying versions of I don't recall. For example, when faced with the police report which contains statements from approximately 30, 30, different victims during a time frame which the defendant acknowledges she was actively working for Epstein at his various homes, defendant challenged the veracity of the victim's reports. Q. Are you saying these 30 girls are lying when they gave these reports to police officers? A. Uh, I'm not testifying to their lies. I'm testifying to Virginia's lies. See Declaration of Sigrid McCauley, McCauley Dackel, at Exhibit 1, April 22, 2016. Deposition of defendant at pages 89 to 90, 83 to 84. While defendant was working with Epstein during the time period when these underage girls were visiting Jeffrey's home, defendant claimed to be at the house maybe once in 2005. ID at page 84. Yet, according to flight manifests, in that same general time period, defendant was listed as a passenger at least 11 times either landing in or departing from West Palm Beach, Florida on Jeffrey Epstein's private plane. See McCauley Dackel at Exhibit 1, April 22, 2016 Depot TR. At page 84, see also McCauley Dackel. At Composite Exhibit 2, flight logs from Jeffrey Epstein's private planes. Moreover, again according to flight logs, defendant was on Epstein's planes over 300 times, including 23 times with Ms. Jufri when Ms. Jufri was underage. Yet, quite remarkably, defendant claimed she couldn't recall even one of those flights. See McCauley Dackel. At Exhibit 1, April 22, 2016 Deposition of Defendant at pages 120-122. Defendant even testified that she did not recall having Ms. Jufri at her London town home with Prince Andrew. Defendant stuck to this incredible story despite flight logs establishing her traveling to London with Ms. Jufri and despite a photograph the three, Ms. Jufri, Prince Andrew and Defendant, all standing together in Defendant's home. See Macaulay Dackel at Exhibit 1, April 22, 2016 Deposition of Defendant at pages 108-111. Defendant's deposition consisted almost entirely of I don't recalls or I refuse to answer that question one and also included a physical outburst that knocked the court reporter's computer off the conference room table. See McCauley Dackel at Exhibit 1, April 22, 2016 Deposition of Defendant at 207-208. Among the many questions that defendant refused to answer at her deposition were a number of questions designed to show that defendant was well aware that for Epstein, a massage was actually a code word sexual activity, i.e., not a therapeutic massage but rather activity that involves sexual gratification for Epstein. Defendant refused to answer all such questions, asserting that they involved private adult sexual relationships which did not relate in any way to Ms. Jufri's claims. ID at page 4. But defendant's involvement in such Relationships with Epstein would show that she knew full well the fate that was in store for Ms. Jufri when she accepted defendant's invitation to come and provide massages to Epstein. Defendant admitted that she worked for Epstein from 1992 to 2009. See McCauley Dackel. At. 1. For example, when asked. Q. Have you ever said to anybody that you recruit girls to take the pressure off you, so you won't have to have sex with Jeffrey? Have you said that? Uh, you don't ask me questions like that. First of all, you are trying to trap me, I will not be trapped. You are asking me if I recruit. I told you no. 
Girls meaning underage, I already said I don't do that with underage people and as to ask me about a specific conversation I had with language, we talking about almost 17 years ago when this took place. I cannot testify to an actual conversation or language that I used with anybody at any time. See Macaulay Dackle. At Exhibit 1, April 22, 2016 Depo TR. At pages 94 to 95. Exhibit 1, April 22, 2016 Deposition of Defendant at pages 10 to 11, 410. As the court knows, the Palm Beach Police Report demonstrates multiple incidents of massages being given by untrained minor children that involve sexual acts. See Macaulay Dackle at Exhibit 3, Palm Beach Police Report. Defendant is also identified in that Palm Beach Police Report. See Macaulay Dackle. At Exhibit 3, Palm Beach Police Report at pages 75 to 76. And the details of Epstein's sexual activities with defendant, for example, are highly relevant to this case because they will help corroborate Ms. Jufri's testimony that, while she was underage, she also engaged in sexual activity of an identical nature with Epstein. To allow defendant to avoid answering these questions would preclude Ms. Jufri from getting critical evidence in this case. Consider, for example, defendant recruiting an 18-year-old girl to be an assistant, bringing that girl to Epstein's home, telling her she could make more money if she would give Epstein a massage, and then instructing her to give a massage that involves sexual acts. Under defendant's theory of discovery, Ms. Jufri would be precluded from deposing her on that topic because the actions would culminate in consensual adult sex. Yet, that scenario would fully validate the pattern of events that occurred with Ms. Jufri when she was under the age of 18. It would obviously show a modus operandi by Jeffrey Epstein and defendant, which is clearly admissible under federal. R. Evid. 404. B. Moreover, such inquiries are crucial to impeaching the defendant at trial. During her deposition, defendant attempted to characterize her work for Epstein as nothing more than a normal job handling hiring for the various mansions. See Macaulay Dackle at Exhibit 1, April 22, 2016 Deposition TR. Of defendant at pages 9 to 12. Ms. Jufri should be able to contest that. Assertion by having defendant fully answer questions about whether that alleged job involved. Sexual activities, including orchestrating the hiring of females and converting massages into sexual encounters. Defendant attempts to paint the picture that Ms. Jufri somehow is interested in all sexual relationships that the defendant may have been involved with. That is not true. Ms. Jufri has no intention of asking unbridled questions. To be clear, Ms. Jufri intends to ask defendant only questions that involve the following very narrow and crucial subject areas. 1. Defendant's sexual relationship with Epstein from 1992 to 2009, the time period in which she worked for Jeffrey Epstein and which Epstein, with the assistance of defendant, was engaging in sexual acts with females under the cover of massage. 2. Defendant's sexual interactions with any person in Epstein's presence during that time period. 3 defendants. Sexual activities at Epstein's residences, including his private island Little St. Jeff's, or his aircraft during that time period. 4. Defendants' sexual activities with identified participants in Epstein's sexual abuse during that time period. And 5. Defendants' sexual interactions that occurred during or through what began as a massage. And 6. Defendants' interactions with females to introduce to Jeffrey Epstein for the purpose of performing work, including sexual massages. Defendant claims that such questions are a mere fishing expedition without acknowledging the fact that these questions go to critical issues in this case. Other witnesses have testified regarding defendants' involvement in recruiting females for sex under the cover of a massage. During the investigation of Jeffrey Epstein, certain household staff was deposed. Alfredo Rodriguez, who was Jeffrey Epstein's household manager, testified that the defendant frequently stayed in Jeffrey Epstein's home and assisted with bringing in young girls to act as masseuses for Jeffrey Epstein. Q. OK. Going back to where we started here was, does Ghislaine Maxwell have knowledge of the girls that would come over to Jeffrey Epstein's house that are in 5. Roughly the same age group as C and T, minor children, and to have a good time as you put it? 
A. Yes. Q. And what was her involvement and her knowledge about that? A. She knew what was going on. C. Macaulay Dackel. At Exhibit 4, Alfredo Rodriguez, July 29, 2009, Dep. TR at 176 to 177. See also Macaulay Dackel. At Exhibit 4, Alfredo Rodriguez, July 29, 2009, Depo TR. At 96 to 101, noting that high school age girls come to the home where Jeffrey Epstein and Ms. Maxwell reside. Juan Alessi, another household employee, also testified that young girls were regularly present at Jeffrey Epstein's home where Ghislaine Maxwell resides. See Macaulay Dackel at Exhibit 5, Juan Alessi, November 21, 2005 Sworn Statement at pages 15-16, 21. Specifically, Juan Alessi informed the Palm Beach Police Detective as follows. Alessi stated that towards the end of his employment, the Masuzas were younger and younger. When asked how young, Mr. Alessi stated they appeared to be 16 or 17 years of age at most. Emphasis added. C. Macaulay Dackel. At Exhibit 3, Palm Beach Police Report at page 57. During one Alessi's November 21, 2005 sworn statement taken by the Palm Beach Police Department, Mr. Alessi revealed that girls would come over to give massages and he observed Ms. Maxwell going upstairs in the direction of the bedroom quarters. C. Macaulay Dackel. At Exhibit 5, one Alessi November 21, 2005 sworn statement at 10. He also testified that after the massages, he would clean up sex toys that were kept in Ms. Maxwell's closet. ID. At 11 to 13. See also Macaulay Dackel. At Exhibit 6, Wanalesi September 8, 2009 Depo TR. At page 7677. He added that he and his wife were concerned with what was going on at the house. ID. At 14, and that he observed girls at the house, including one named Virginia. ID. At 21. Mr. Rodriguez also testified that defendant also had naked pictures of girls performing sexual acts on her computer. See Macaulay Dackel. At Exhibit 7, Alfredo Rodriguez August 7, 2009 Dep. TR. At 311 to 312, see also Macaulay Dackel. At Exhibit 6, Juan Alessi, September 8, 2009. Depo TR, at pages 40 to 41, I know she, Maxwell, went out and took pictures in the pool because later, on I would see them at the desk or at the house. And nude 99.9% .9 of the time they were. Topless. They were European girls. Q. Did they appear to be doing any sexual? A. Yes, ma'am. Q. And in these instances were there girls doing sexual things with other girls? A. Yes, ma'am. Q. And I'm still talking about the pictures on Ms. Maxwell's computer. A. Yes, ma'am. Upon leaving his employment, Rodriguez testified that defendant threatened him that he should not tell anyone about what happened at the house. A. I have to say something. Mrs. Maxwell called me and told me not to ever discuss or contact her again in a threatened, ing, way. Q. When was this? Uh, right after I left because I call one of the friends for a job and she told me this, but, you know, I feel intimidated and so I want to keep her out. Q. She made a telephone call to you and what precisely did she say? A. She said I forbid you that you're going to be that I will be sorry if I contact any of her friends again, she said something like don't open your mouth or something like that. I'm a civil humble, I came as an immigrant to service people, and right now you feel a little, I'm 55 and I'm afraid. First of all, I don't have a job, but I'm glad this is on tape because I don't want nothing to happen to me. This is the way they treat you, better do this and you shut up and don't talk to nobody and... Q. When you say this is the way they treat, who specifically are you talking about when you say that word they? A. Maxwell. C. Macaulay Dackel. At Exhibit 4, Alfredo Rodriguez, July 29, 2009 Dep. T.R. At 169, 172. 
In sum, at the core of this case are statements made by Ms. Jufri that she was recruited by defendant to be paid as a masseuse, yet was enticed or coerced into engaging in sexual acts with Epstein and defendant for money. She has further explained that the recruitment of females through the offer of some legitimate position was the typical way in which defendant and Epstein lured unsuspecting females to the house before converting the relationship into a sexual one. Ms. Jufri has described the frequency of these massages, the sexual tendencies of the participants, the manner in which the massages became sexual in nature, and defendant's role at each stage. In response, defendant has called Ms. Jufri's entire account untrue and obvious. Lies. Defendant has instead tried to portray her role as nothing more than an Epstein employee performing typical household management duties. Any personal knowledge defendant has of Epstein's sexual tendencies, habits, and use of massage for sex is entirely relevant to either corroborate Ms. Jufri's account. Likewise, defendant's participation in any sexual acts with Epstein, in his presence, on his properties, using his mode of converting massages into sex, or with females will directly corroborate Ms. Jufri's account. On the other hand, without access to the answers to these inquiries, Ms. Jufri will be unable to expose the bias of defendant, unable to thoroughly cross-examine defendant's position that she was just a lowly employee, and most importantly unable to demonstrate through the defendant's own admissions that Ms. Jufri's statements about Epstein and defendant were absolutely true, and not obvious lies. Finally, Defendant fails to recognize that, for the discovery purposes at issue here, relevance is an extremely broad concept. A.M. Fed N of Musicians of the United States and Canada vs. Sony Music Ent, Inc., No. 15 CV 05249 GBDBCM, 2016 WL 9307 at asterisk 3. SDNY. April 29, 2016. And once relevance is shown, the party resisting discovery bears the burden of demonstrating that, despite the broad and liberal construction afforded the federal discovery rules, the requests are irrelevant, or are overly broad, burdensome, or oppressive. ID. Here, the requests are not overly broad as Ms. Jufri's specific explanations of the targets of her questions make clear. Moreover, answering the questions is not oppressive, particularly given the fact that defendant has placed all substantive aspects of the deposition under seal. Of course, once defendant answers the question, and her answers are placed under seal, the parties can file any further motions that may be required to determine whether the answers may be introduced at trial. Conclusion Defendant should be ordered to answer questions regarding sexual activity connected with Epstein's sexual abuse and sexual trafficking organization as specifically identified above. Dated May 11, 2016. Respectfully submitted. Boys, Schiller and Flexner LLP. By slash s slash Sigrid McCauley. Sigrid McCauley, Pro Hack Vice, Meredith Schultz, Pro Hack Vice, Boyce Schiller and Flexner LLP 401, East Los Olas Boulevard, Suite 1200 FT. Lauderdale, FL 3330195435600011. David Boyce Boyce Schiller and Flexner LLP 333, Main Street Armonk, New York, 10504. Bradley J. Edwards, Pro Hack Vice, Farmer, Jaffe, Weising, Edwards, Fistos and Lehrman, PL. 425 North Andrews Avenue, Suite 2 Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 3330195452428202820. Paul G. Castle, Pro Hack Vice, SJ. Quinney College of Law University of Utah 383, University Street Salt Lake City, Utah, 84112-801-585-52022. Certificate of Service. I hereby certify that on the 11th day of May, 2016, I electronically filed the foregoing document with the clerk of court by using the CM slash ECF system. I also certify that the foregoing document is being served this day on the individuals identified below via transmission of notices of electronic filing generated by CM slash ECF. 
Laura A. Menninger, ESQ Jeffrey Pagliuca, ESQ. Haddon, Morgan and Foreman, PC.